All right, today we're gonna to be taking apart a Lenovo Yoga C930-13 IKB. Uh, this has a Core i7 8th gen, and it's a convertible touchscreen laptop. Uh, just be advised that we are not taking the display apart. We're gonna leave that in one piece, and um, it's a slimline laptop, so these are a total nightmare to take apart anyways. So if you're a layman, definitely consider buying this as an assembly if you need to and then we'll cover removing the display from the chassis. All right, so to get started, we're gonna need a small Torx bit. This is a T5. And we'll just flip the laptop over and we're gonna remove the perimeter screws here. All right, now that we have the screws out, uh, I found the easiest way to pop these bottom covers off is to get it down by the hinge and just get it under that little back plate there. I'm just going to make a little bit of a gap right here. And you can see it's starting to kind of come up on the edge. And it actually pops off pretty easy. It's just kind of getting it started uh, over here. You got to pry up a little bit until it uh, pops up a little bit, like you saw in the corner. So just keep working it. Don't be too rough, and it'll eventually pop up for you. All right, now that we have a good view of the inside of the laptop, I'm gonna assume most of these are a small uh, 2.0 Phillips bit. So it looks like that's about all you'll need to finish taking this apart. It's just that Torx T5 and then a small Phillips bit. All right, so we'll start by removing the battery. It looks like there's originally four, but this uh, appears, to ha appears to have a broken mount here. Uh, something you'll see common on these really thin batteries, the little thin plastic tabs they use uh, will break. You know, if this thing is, you know, handled even a little bit rough, they tend to break those off. All right, so now that we have the battery free, uh, we're just gonna try to help this connector out. Uh, if you can get your fingernail on it, I'll just work that connector out while pulling gently on the battery backwards. That's how you remove the battery. All right, so next we are going to remove the SSD drive and it is just the one Phillips screw. I'll lift it up a little bit to get a good pinch on it, pull it out. This is an NVMe 2280 SSD drive. All right, we'll flip it around and do the same thing for the Wi-Fi card. Just pop those antennas straight up, and they'll come off, and then you can remove the screw. have to kind of lift it a little bit to clear that screw post and then you can pull it out of the slot. All right, so next we can go ahead and remove the fan and heat sink. It looks like it's an assembly at least taped together. So we'll go ahead and just pull those connectors, slide them straight out of the uh, motherboard connector. And then once you have the fans disconnected, we can go ahead and remove the screws. And for the heatsink, uh, there's a number stamped in 
the order that you're supposed to tighten them down. So it doesn't matter when you remove them, but tighten them in a one, two, three pattern. So these screws are a little bit uh, finer, so I'm gonna go to a 1.5. So you might need a little bit smaller of a screwdriver for the fan and heat sink screws. As long as you have a few different precision Phillips, one of them should work. And the other thing I noticed about the laptop is the RAM is not upgradable. Um, it's probably underneath this cover, so it's got these integrated RAM chips. So whatever RAM your laptop came with is what you're going to have. Alright, so we got the last screw out. And the thermal paste is still nice and new, so it'll just come straight out. And sometimes the paste, when it gets old, can really hold these on so you might need to wiggle a little bit but in this case it's nice and soft and we've removed the fan and heat sink assembly all right um i think i'll go ahead and remove the stylus so a lot of the stuff i'm going to leave um connected to the palm rest but uh once you you know you uncover the keyboard I believe it's replaceable. Most keyboards that are attached to a aluminum base uh, are held in by screws and on the newer laptops if you have a plastic palm rest it's a good chance that the keyboard is uh, held in with melted plastic rivets and those are usually not really upgradable or um, not upgradable but replaceable. Alright so we'll go ahead and just uh, start removing the ribbons from the motherboard here and most of these connectors look like the simple flip up type so you just flip up on the little retainer and remove the ribbon and then push it back down to kind of keep it safe So you got everything on that side. And you got a speaker connection here. This type just simply pulls out. And we have a couple uh, cables coming from the display assembly. So there's a little one. It's got a kind of a notch in the top. You want to get your fingernail or some kind of tool in that to get in that little recess to push that out. You definitely don't want to tug on the cable on any of these. All right, so it looks like our display and webcam cable, uh, this type just pops straight up and off. So just use your fingernail and get under the tabs on the other side and then just pop it straight up and off. So this little connector, um, I don't think I have the fingernails for that, so I'm just going to use the spudger to pop that one and off. Alright, so if you need to replace your display assembly, um, it looks like it's pretty easy. You don't have to go through removing most of the stuff. As long as you can detach these three cables and remove these hinge screws and probably these, looks like there's a kind of a cover here. Um, you should be able to separate the display assembly from the chassis without having to remove all of this stuff. But we're just gonna go in order and finish removing the motherboard. So it looks like it has a whole bunch of screws on it, so we'll go ahead and do a double check of the ribbons. And then we'll go ahead and remove the motherboard screws, which also look like they're about a 1.5.
All right, now that we have those motherboard screws out and there was quite a bit of them, uh, we're just gonna kind of give it a wiggle and make sure that it feels like we got everything and it does wiggles freely. And when you're removing a motherboard, you wanna pay attention to the ports and just make sure you're not prying up really hard on those. So it's best to lift from the inside part and pull the ports clear of the palm rest or bottom case, whichever one they're poking through. And we'll turn it over slowly, make sure there's no other ribbons connected. And that is how you remove the motherboard. All right, so I'm just gonna make sure, yeah, those are definitely screws. So if you need to replace your keyboard, um, just be prepared to take lots of screws out. You can kind of see where they are right here through the uh, backing plastic. Um, the fingerprint reader looks like it's just the one uh, one screw to remove that and it looks like a few screws to remove the uh, carrier for your stylus pin. And speakers are just a couple Phillips head screws for each one. And touchpad, uh, again, just a few screws to remove the touchpad assembly. So all in all, it's a pretty, uh, pretty well constructed um, modular laptop. Not too much that you can't replace in here unless you're talking about the RAM and processor. But as far as replacing parts that go bad, uh, you definitely have the option. All right. So we can go ahead and separate the display assembly from the palm rest assembly. And since this is a two in one, I can just go ahead and open it up all the way right now. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the little hinge cable cover here. All right, so the easiest way to take this thing off, um, it, it took me a minute to figure out the best way to pop it off because it doesn't seem to want to come off uh, by prying upwards. So just flip it over and press in with your thumb on that, that same part from the back and you see how it's loose and I can wiggle it now. So there it is flipped up. So I was trying to pop it up with a spudger and it would not budge so apparently getting it from the other side is just way easier so that's how you flip up the little cable stay and we'll continue uh, with removing the display assembly. So I'm hoping we can still leave that up. Yeah, that'll work. So yeah, we'll open this display back up so we can just immediately separate it once we get the screws out. Most laptops that are not uh, like a two-in-one that flip 360 degrees around, uh, you need to have it in a fully open position before uh, the hinges will clear the palm rest. Definitely easier in the two in ones. So now we have those screws out. We can. Looks like there's one little cover or something here that also needs to come out to free this one hinge. So it's just a little piece of removable vent that uh, they had to put in to allow that hinge to come out of the palm rest. So there we go, we got the hinge screws and that one stay. And we can remove the display assembly. So definitely, um, if you're gonna attempt to try to open this thing, you need a heat gun and a lot of patience. 
I believe this little uh, lower bar comes off to expose some screws. It does on some models, but I'm not sure on this one. But for the major part of slimline screens, you don't even want to try separating them because you end up usually breaking the digitizer or the screen. All right, so the palm rest, uh, like we discussed, is just uh, a number of screws to remove that keyboard. Same with the touchpad, four screws, a couple screws for the, the speakers. So all in all, it's a pretty easy laptop to work on. Uh, you just gotta be careful and gentle because a lot of this stuff is really miniaturized, so especially the cables. All right, so that is how you disassemble a Lenovo Yoga C930-13 IKB. It's a 13.3 inch, I believe, uh, two-in-one convertible laptop. So if this video helped you or you liked it, please like and subscribe. Thank you.